Well, hi there. This is Aquaponic One. Um, sorry it's taking so long for me to get this yearly update going. I was hoping to have the other grow bed going by now, but uh, we went into October break and money's just too tight. So um, I don't want to rush it, you know, and just mess up the second pod. Um, I'm going to do this yearly update in four parts. Maybe if, it, if I can get it done in three, I'll do it in three. But I want to just focus on a few things and what we've learned in the first year of this system running. And this first part, I want to just go over the, uh, the designs and placement along with the hardware used. See a lot of people, you know, with their aquaponic gardens and they're investing a lot of money into, you know, different types of grow beds and, you know, different types of uh, barrels or aquariums or ponds, you know, <clears throat> and a lot of money goes into these things to get them designed. I have done a lot of this with recycled materials and even with that building the actual frame and getting you know the substrate that you want to use with everything you know powder coated screws and everything you're still looking at you know 120 130 dollars per pod now this was using the general gravel from Home Depot, it's like $3 a bag. It took nine bags to fill this up. The other material of choice is expanded clay. And I have some of this for the uh, NFT system. It's inert, it's porous, it generates tons of bacteria, which is great. It's very easy. I mean, just totally easy on the hands however it's really light and really expensive this is a five liter bag right here in this little pail five liter bag this was seven dollars for five liters I would need a ton to fill one of these beds and then the first windstorm that blows through things will just fall over it doesn't have you know really any power to hold anything large up. It'll be perfect for these NFT systems, but I'm not going to be growing, you know, tomatoes or peppers out of it. I've had a windstorm come through with the peppers and blow the plants over, and that's with this heavy gravel. So I definitely suggest that you go with gravel. And when you do go with gravel, I went with the Home Depot because it's just, uh, it was convenient and it was very inexpensive. The problem with it is, is that it's not all one size. It's, you know, got sand and, you know, smaller particles and smaller, you know, stones in it. So those factors can cause issues with drainage and creating, you know, zones that are not getting the water transfer through because all of the waste material that goes into it is stopping up the system. So the second grow bed, when I when I go ahead and get the gravel, I will be going with three quarter inch gravel uh, to get rid of all of the smaller particles, and it'll probably function even better than this bed. Not to complain about this bed at all. Three quarter inch gravel, um, the grow beds. The downside of using a barrel, a half barrel is that it's not squared off all the way, obviously. It would be awesome to be able to find some square barrels. They would be ideal for this system. However, that being said, the reason being is just because of the overall depth. You want about 12 inches, you know, 11 to 12 inches of actual media in the grow bed to allow for the different stages of, of zones where you have silt, you know, rock, and be able to have all of your your drainage drying oxygen around the roots as much as possible but I've had several plants the cucumber the uh, Roma tomato 
I've got this is another tomato right here and you can see it's right near the edge so the slope it, the roots would slope down towards the center and it really doesn't seem to affect them I mean look how thick and woody this branches off of this Thai basil this thing grows like mad and it's right near the edge with your designs make sure that you leave yourself room to maneuver around it so that you can service everything and the way that I had it originally it was much closer to the wall here and, and there was two problems with that one the the eave would create you know a, a, a shadow on the back part of the grow bed so we're not getting as much light now that I've moved it out and I've dropped it down 16 inches we're getting uh, minimal light right now just because we're going through the shift in the solstice when the solstice is in, in into its winter solstice the sun is going to be right above that house line there and just shines on here so uh, I'm not real worried about it now <clears throat> but make sure that you can get to all your controls your air pumps your power and all of your junctions so that you can service you're, you're going to have to adjust you know the drain periodically to get your your siphon system your vacuum system working properly so you have to be able to get to everything don't work yourself into a corner use you know, you can use really tight frames and everything, but I found building a nice wood frame like this that it allows me possibilities for add-on. As you can see, you know, we just keep adding on, and and depending on how you approach it, you can make it look, you know, very uh, angular, and and so it's not just a basic shelf sitting there and working with the rest of the, you know, the wood that. I have built the trellises out of and by the way aside from this frame which you know I had to pick the pieces up all of the wood all of the plumbing are things that I've had around it's all scrap all of this trellis stuff is all scrap that I have and technically the barrels because they have already been used for their purpose are, are recycled also this allows me a lot of room to expand and to create, you know, things that out of necessity, you know, for uh, vining plants to, to climb and, and just uh, always keep in mind when you place your system, it's not an arbitrary thing. You need to think about it. Come out in the afternoons. This is the south side of our house but we have this add-on so they're the first part of the morning that's not getting any sun this it's about nine o'clock right now and we're just starting to get everything into full sun so you know your your placement can be more ideal even than this but that is all in relation to how far away your water source is going to be because I don't want this further out in the sun this way where I could get you know more daylight for the plants and then but be constantly fighting the temperature of the water so for my needs this is working out very very well um, garden screen helps a lot because the plants are susceptible to UV just as much as we are and it doesn't filter out the light that they need and it'll help control the temperature of the water again as far as materials these valves right here might not be ideal but it's a cost issue again you know you can get nicer um, more accurate valves for sure but you're gonna be pay you know two or three times what this valve costs and I can get it to work it takes a little bit of tinkering to get your your feed balance and everything worked out to where your system is flushing you know on, on a, a decent time schedule but it also is gonna allow me to you know still branch out um, 
the no kink hose that is popular at the obvious stores in our area was a good idea initially but if you plan out the system very well you can use the standard tubing that is sold for um, sprinkler and drip systems they're just prone to kinking so if and, and they actually fit these fittings properly where I'm having to convert um, and I actually in order to get this tube which is supposed to be the same size as this fitting um, I had to use a, a hair dryer to heat the plastic up and work the fitting into there the ribbing on it is very hard to work with um, and it's very expensive so I'll eventually be removing that from the system and probably going to a half inch uh, PVC setup to feed everything here and just one short piece of hose from the um, from the pump which brings us to the pump um, the big deal with pumps is is that you can find pumps that say that they're gonna you know pump a thousand gallons per hour or whatever but once you start adding what they call head height to it where the, the pump is actually pumping up then they're rated in feet and they lose a lot of pressure for every foot that they're feeding vertically you want to look for a pump that has head pressure um, charts if it doesn't then it could say a thousand gallons per hour but it was, if, as soon as it's pumping two feet vertically it'll barely be able to flow you can find good pumps at Harbor Freight I have the one that's running the breeder system inside is from Harbor Freight and it's head height it's it's putting out more pressure than I even calculated and expected it to and it was under $20 for a uh, 550 gallon uh, per hour pump this is a 500 gallon per hour pump that I had from top fin but you can't get them anymore I've had it for years and it has been knock on wood running for a year straight and feeding this whole system so just make sure that you you're aware of the pumps ability to pump vertically because your, your your designs aren't always going to be you know level and you have to spend money wisely on this system as far as I'm concerned because that's you know another big factor with all of the bigger systems and prefab grow beds that everybody has out everybody almost everybody in aquaponics still grows the same type of stuff that they would in a dirt garden they're not growing anything exotic that would be expensive you know you're growing lettuce and you're growing basil and tomatoes and things that are you know even though they're more expensive nowadays they're still relatively cheaper to do by just going and buying them rather than growing them and if you're if you have grow lights involved in the system and you know massive pumps and all of this it's it's costing a lot to produce anything that you use out of the system it's not really necessary to do it that way and that's why I do these videos is to help people with their own designs you know in any in the future anybody that would want help designing or installing you know then I would love to do this for a business but the DIY aspect of this is saving money and you have to figure that the the pump that I'm running there and the air pump that I'm running 90% of the time I have to run the heaters you know and that's adds wattage in but this system draws 47 watts of power and that's it so I get a lot of gratification I'm not spending a ton of money to come up with basic foods that everybody uses in your designs uh, keep in mind that there's a lot of ways to do this. This one is a little bit different than any of the that I've seen, and it allows for 
if the power goes out, an air bubble will be sucked into this tube and shut the siphon off, otherwise it would just suck all the water out. When it comes back on though, you have to restart the siphon, so you need a secondary drain. This two inch secondary drain, which I could run the whole system off that way without this other set setup at all. Um, it's just, this allows for cleaning of the bottom as well as skimming the top. And uh, you, you need to make sure that you have backup systems. If the water were to shut off, which happens once in a great while, but for a very short period of time, the pump shuts off, this loses siphon, and then the pump shut comes back on, and it's going to overflow the tank. At, with a two inch drain overflow, there's no way that the tank will ever flood, and the system won't function properly until you get a chance to get back and restart your main siphon. So always make sure that you have ways to keep from killing your fish and dumping all of your water out of your system and having to start all over again. So let's see, what else is there? I think that might do it for this section of the hardware design and placement. Um, I want to say thanks to everybody that continues to view the videos and I hope that you're getting something out of them. Uh, to all the new subscribers, thank you and welcome. Any questions? Anybody locally that wants to get in touch with me, um, go ahead and drop me in, in line or a, a, a message in my inbox on YouTube and then I can uh, get together with you locally for any help or designs or builds or installs that you might want and uh, I'll get back with another video and we'll go over water chemistry and the fish and um, pest control and uh, thanks for watching stay tuned